Hi there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be reanalyzing the company Verizon. But I actually figured out that I haven't done this company for several months now. I believe this was one of the first ones I ever did on my channel. And since it's been a long time, prices have fluctuated, things have changed. I want to see if this company's fundamentals actually match the ticker price. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Starting off guys, we got the dividend summary, which is actually one of the main reasons why a lot of people like to invest in this company. And by the way, full disclosure, I am invested in this company. It's actually one of my top five biggest holdings actually. And it's because of this dividend. Dividend yield of 5.04%, which ends up being 64 cents a share for an annual payout of $2.56. Payout ratio in regards to the net income is around 46.94%. Now, companies don't use their net income to actually pay out dividends, they use their free cash flow. So, we're going to take a look at the free cash flow's payout ratio in the discounted free cash flow calculator sheet. The five year growth rate is really, really small, guys, at around 2.1% which, you know, Verizon is a major, major corporation. I don't expect this to be significantly high. Also, the fact that when it comes to the telecom sector, it is very, very indebted. I mean, every single telecom company, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, if you look at their debts, they are very, very in debt. So I think it's just a sector thing, which seeing that that's the case, it's justifiable as to why this five-year growth rate is so low. They have increased its dividend for 17 consecutive years. Ex dividend date is April 7th, and payout date is May 2nd. So you still have a couple days if you want to invest, depending if we consider this price to be good or not. And of course, they pay their dividends quarterly. Now, guys, as I said, I am a shareholder of this company. In fact, I hold around 170.44 shares, which actually ends up being a quarterly dividend that they actually end up paying me every single quarter quarter at a little bit more than $109.08. So I'm just telling you guys that I do own this company and I have my reasons to actually own this company. Currently, I am in the red by around $718. However, this dividend payment is very, very solid. Now let's come over here to the calculator. We got the ticker symbol VZ market cap of $213.3 billion PE of 9.55 guys, which is very, very cheap at the current share price of $50.80. I'm actually pretty surprised by this. I did not realize that they felt $50.80. I wish I would have caught this when this happened because I actually would have bought significantly more into Verizon. But nonetheless, just based on their earnings, this is pretty much telling me that this is a pretty good price. However, let's take a look at other metrics to make an even more accurate assumption. Now, as I said, guys, they do pay an annual dividends per share of $2.56, which actually ends up being $10.7 billion being paid out in dividends every single year. Now, in regards to the free cash flow, their five-year average free cash flow, after the, this dividend is paid out, they're still left with about $6.3 billion, which is around 62.93, almost 63% in regards to the free cash flow. As a payout ratio so this is a little bit high as to where my metric likes to be i like to buy anything under 60 however 62 63 we're barely there at the threshold i'm willing to make an exception for this now let's come over here to the fundamentals net income five years ago of 30.1 billion dollars to one year ago of 22.1 billion dollars which is a decrease of 27 percent yikes all throughout pretty much the entirety of five years they have just been going down and fluctuating pretty much they have not gone anywhere, right? Only five years ago did they actually break that $30 billion mark. And as of then, they have not been able to surpass it. So this metric is 100% negative. And not just that, it's not like we only have one year where it's like an outlier. It's almost like every single year has been pretty consistently going down or at least remaining the same. Now coming over here to the free cash flow, the lifeblood of the company. Unlike the net income, this was actually looking pretty good. Five years ago of $7.1 billion to one year ago of $19.3 billion, increase of 172% with a five-year average free cash flow, guys, of $17.1 billion. This is actually really, really amazing because even in 2020, so two years ago when COVID happened, they actually beat all of their other cash flows, even last year's cash flow, which is very, very interesting. So unlike the net income, free cash flow is one of the most important metrics because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Therefore, if we can see that they have been doing pretty good with their free cash flow, then, well, we can make the assumption that they might be doing this into the future, especially with new technologies coming out like 5G. 
Now let's go on to the revenue. Five years ago of $126 million to one year ago of $133.6 million. That's a small increase, guys, around 6.01%. It's pretty stagnant across the board. Now, two years ago, because of COVID, they did slightly go down, but it really wasn't down by much. And yeah, it's just pretty much remained stable and stagnant pretty much throughout the past five years. Now let's do the total assets minus the total liabilities. Last time I did this company, I didn't have this metric. I just had the total debt. So now let's actually see if they are able to cover their liabilities. And as you guys can see right here, they absolutely cannot. Now, I did say something at the beginning of the video in that telecom companies, apparently this sector is riddled with debt. It is just a sector wide thing and it happens. And well, as you can see, we're pretty much seeing it here. Currently, they're in the red by negative $10.4 billion, which is huge. Not just that, guys. They have been in the negatives pretty much every single year, except ironically enough, during COVID. Normally, you would think that this would be the year that it would go negative, and it was the only year that it went positive. I don't necessarily know what caused this. Maybe because a lot more people wanted to communicate. They wanted a lot more, well, the networking system. When it comes to networks like 4G and 5G, I'm pretty sure they were overly used because nobody could leave. So never mind, I'm actually going to take that back. And this actually does make sense as to why the total assets actually surpassed their liabilities when it came to 2020. Average total assets around $38.3 billion. Average liabilities around $41.6 billion. Average assets minus average liabilities, we got around negative $3.3 billion dollars now guys let's take a look at the silent killer when it comes to investing the shares outstanding you want this number to be going down not up because this is the one that tells you what the board what the ceo is doing in that are they buying back shares or are they issuing shares if this number is going up that means that they're issuing shares diluting you as the investor if this number is going down they are buying back shares and giving you a bigger piece of the pie when it comes to their business and also when they buy back shares guys that is a dividend that they no longer have to pay out which is even better for them it actually decreases their payout ratio now when it comes to the Verizon five years ago they had 4.1 billion shares to currently of around 4.2 billion shares now guys that is an increase on the five years around 2.9% and from the previous year to the current year, this one's being taken from two years ago to one year ago, and it was about 1.44%. Now, 2.9%, essentially 3%, to me, this isn't really a big deal. Any increase that's between one to five, to me, I just see it as a justification that they might see that their share price is a little bit overvalued. And they figure, you know what, instead of taking on debt, which let's face it, they have a ton of debt. Instead of taking on debt, let's just issue a little bit of shares just so that way we can recuperate some losses, right? I don't consider this a bad metric in the slightest. And it's, yeah, it is an increase, but it's not like a ridiculous increase. So that's just something to take a look at. And actually, I'm going to take this as a positive metric. And lastly, we got the cash and equivalents. Currently, they have around $3 billion in cash and equivalents with an average cash and equivalents around $5.9 billion. Now, guys, let's actually make some assumptions, low, medium, high, and I'm going to be using three different factors, revenue growth, assumption, projected share buyback, and the required rate of return. For the required rate of return, guys, I'm going to keep it the same at 10% across the board. Revenue growth, I'm going to be using Seeking Alpha's growth tab, and I'm just going to see the revenue growth year over year the revenue grow forward and make an assumption right in between those two. And for the projected share buyback, I'm going to be using the shares outstanding that we just saw, and I'm gonna to try to see where they might go into the future when it comes to the shares outstanding. Now, for my low assumptions, guys, I'm going to assume a revenue growth of 2%, projected share buyback of negative one. This means that they're gonna issue shares, but they're going to issue shares at instead of 2.9%, they're gonna issue shares at 1%. It's essentially lowering the rate of increase. This comes out to be a target share price of $61.43. For my media assumption, I'm going to assume a growth of 4%, Predicted share buyback of zero, meaning that they won't issue or buy shares. This comes out to be a target share price of $66.56. And lastly, for my highest assumption, I'm going to say a revenue growth of 5% and predicted share buyback of 1%. This comes out to be $69.60. Now we need to adjust for debt and the way that we do this is we take their cash equivalents and we subtract the net debt. If they have more debt than cash, then this number goes down. If they have more cash than debt, then this number goes up. Obviously guys, as we just saw, as I stated at the beginning also, this sector is riddled when it comes to debt. It's unfortunate to see. Now this makes the target share prices come down all the way up to $19.92. From a median assumption, it is $24.63 and from highest assumption, it is $27 dollars and 25 cents now i like to add a margin of safety 5 10 and 50 percent just so that way we have a cushion to that so that way we can actually get more returns in the future now 
In doing so, for my low assumption, we would like to buy between around $17 all the way up to around $19. For my median assumption, I would like to buy between $21 to around $23.40. And for my highest assumption, I would like to buy between $23.60 to around $26. Now guys, the current share price is $50.80, which really does goes to show as to how much debt they have because, well, the, the target share prices adjusting for debt are very, very low right however if you take a look at the target share price is not adjusting for debt this is pretty much telling you that this is a good buy right now right and if you actually take a look at verizon's stock price going all the way back five years you can see that the lowest price that they ever reached was in july 10th 2017 it was around 43 dollars and 55 cents and ever since then guys even at the pandemic the low of the pandemic the lowest that they got was around 51 dollars and 73 cents so they have been pretty much stuck at this rut at around the 50 dollar mark to around the 60 dollar mark now obviously five years ago they did go down the way to, to 43 however if you just take a look at the 2020 which was the biggest drop they barely went down so for all intents and purposes it really is up to you at this point me personally, as I said, I do own this stock and I believe that my average price is around like $52. So anytime I get a chance to buy anything under 52, I usually take advantage of that just to lower my average price. But nonetheless, that's essentially what I'm doing. And again, these are just my assumptions. I like this company. I own a ton of this company. And that doesn't mean that you guys should do the same, seeing that my numbers actually say that, hey, this is a pretty good buy right now if you don't take into account debt. You should make your own assumptions. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you guys what I would do. I have this calculator available. Anybody could have it in my discounted free cash flow calculator series. It's a, it's a playlist. So if you guys go there, you guys can see it. It's available for free. Go up, come up here to files and make a copy. And then you can make your own assumptions yourself. All I ask from return, guys, is like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. I would love to grow my channel further. We're up to, what, 451 subs. That's awesome. Would love to get to 500 by the end of March, so in about 11 days. I don't, Hopefully, I would like to get to that. However, I don't think we're going to make it. But prove me wrong, right? Prove me wrong. I'm giving you guys something for free. I'm asking for two seconds out of your day to just click that subscribe button, click that bell, and click that like. That's about it. It's really all I'm asking for. So if you guys can help me with that, that'd be great. Now let's actually see the dividends at the current price. I want to know if I were to put one month's income into this company, how much in dividends would I get since this is a dividend paying company? It's actually the main reason why I like it, right? Now, let's just say you take the average US income, which is around $68,703, bring it to the monthly, that is around $5,725.25. Seeing that the annual dividends per share is $2.56, putting one month's paycheck into this company buys you around 112.7 shares, which is an annual dividend of $288.52, quarterly dividends of $72.13, which comes out to be a monthly dividend of around $24.40. Four cents, guys. This is absolutely massive, right? Seventy-two dollars. That is amazing. That is absolutely incredible. Seeing that, essentially, you're almost getting a hundred dollars. You're thirty dollars off from getting a hundred dollars from this company. That's absolutely incredible. All in all, guys, as I said, I am a shareholder of this company. A lot of people don't understand it, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, obviously, when it comes to their net income, it's it's kind of underwhelming, right? But I honestly just see this company as nice and boring, especially when it comes to the 5G, right? I mean, everybody has cell phones. The big three are what? Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile? That's about it, right? So I do not see any more competition coming in, especially with the, with the moat that these three companies have as a whole. So I see that this company is pretty boring, pretty stable, and even if they don't grow their share price, right? That's perfectly fine. I'm okay with just getting a nice solid dividend every single quarter. With that said, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. You can follow me on my new tech sites of Bitchu, Odyssey, and Rumble. All links in the description. When it comes to YouTube, Odyssey, and Rumble, I have a Let's Play channel. Link in the description below. I actually just put out a new Bloons TD Battles video, so if you want to catch that, make sure you watch it. Something fun happens at around like the 19-minute mark. You guys really want to see it. But anyways, that pretty much does it. Peace out, and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis a video.